The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. And again, as always, guys, we want to welcome you to the broadcast. If you are new to the broadcast, right there in the comment section below, be sure to let us know where you guys are joining us from and that indeed that you are new and that you're joining us today. Um, we're going to talk, we've got an interesting topic today that we're going to share with you. Uh, and it is going to be out of the book of revelation. Uh, so for you guys who like to keep up with eschatology, the study of end times, this is a question, uh, I have read, uh, or I have asked myself personally, and I've studied this and we're going to discuss this today, who or what in the world are these locusts that are mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 9 that are coming out of this pit? So obviously, that's what our topic of discussion is going to be for today, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let me give you, I'm going to give, I cannot put all this scripture up on the screen, so I'm going to give you the scripture reference to this. And then you can follow along with me if you have a Bible, or you can just listen. Again, uh, this is way too much to put up on the screen. So I'm going to read this uh, real quick to give you a point of reference of what we're talking about. I'm going to read it all the way through Revelation chapter 9, and then we're going to go back and we're going to break this down. And we're going to try to interpret or give you some possible scenarios of what in the world John the Revelator saw that he's describing here in the book of Revelation chapter 9. So here we go. Ready? This is going to be from the New King James. Does no harm to the scripture. When you read this in the King James, it really it lines right up with this. So we're going to read this because it's a little bit more simpler to understand. And then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall falling from heaven to the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. In verse three, and then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth. And to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of God upon their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of these locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. In verse 10, they had tails like scorpions in their... And there, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men for five months. And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in the Greek, he has the name Apollyon. So now I want to, that is the entire text of what our topic of discussion is about today. So again, if you're just joining us, who or what is the locust that John the Revelator saw when he wrote the book of Revelation, the Lord allowed him to see into the future a time when we'd be in the great tribulation, and he saw something coming out of this pit that he described in his day as locusts. Now, I want to say something here. Remember, John had a vocabulary. The book of Revelation was written in 95, approximately 95 AD. So he had vocabulary that he was uh, familiar with in his day 
that he was trying to describe about something that he saw way into the future, thousands of years later. So he was limited to the vocabulary that he could use to describe events and things that he saw thousands of years into the future. So you got to keep this in mind when we start breaking this down. So let's go back and let's just break this down. Again, this today is a word that we would call a word of exhortation, uh, where you, you break down the scriptures and it teaches and it equips people on the scriptures. So let's read this again. Then the fifth angel sounded and I, and John speaking, I saw a star. Now, this word star here is not regarding a celestial, uh, uh, it's not talking about a star in heaven. It's not talking about a, uh, what we see at night when we look into the heavens and we see stars, which again, uh, our galaxy is filled with billions, if not trillions and, and countless numbers of stars being celestial in nature. That is not what this is. This Greek word here for star is actually a metaphor for an angelic being. Again, this is a, uh, a Greek word meaning an angel or a messenger. So John said, I saw a angel fallen from heaven to the earth. And here's, if you want proof that I'm telling you what is scripturally accurate, look at the next portion of, of, of verse 1 in Revelation 9. And to him, masculine pronoun. Now, a star, he's not talking about a star that we see, twinkle little star in heaven. He's talking about an angelic being, a messenger. And to this being this angel listen to this was given the key to the bottomless pit somebody say the bottomless pit verse two he opened and he opened the bottomless pit and smoke around arose out of the pit somebody say the pit this word pit here in the greek is is abusos and it's where we get the word abyss or the word deep and it's this same word is found in the book of genesis when god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the abusos or the abyss the deep it's mentioned in seven verses in the book of revelation and this is the same location, the pit here mentioned by John, is the same location where Lucifer, where who we know as Satan, will also be brought down and confined in during the thousand year millennial reign of Christ. And the book of Revelation talks about that. Lucifer or Satan will be bound for a thousand years. And it's in this abusos, this abyss, this pit that, uh, that according to the book of Revelation, the nations of the world, the people of the world will be able to look down into this pit and they will look upon this anointed cherub that the Bible talks, talks about in the book of Isaiah and the book of Ezekiel called Lucifer. This, according to scholars, this pit is the primeval ocean depths or the compartment in the underworld. Now, Jude and Peter both reference fallen angels that are actually right now present tense bound in chains of darkness under the earth and during the tribulation the pit this pit will be opened and out of it will come the unleashing of demonic powers that have been bound there since the fall of lucifer and since this place was created in genesis chapter one 
This will also be, again, the same pit that you will find Lucifer bound for a thousand years. This pit is also, you remember in the New Testament, when Jesus confronted the man at the Gadarenes who was bound by a legion or a thousand demons, and they pleaded with him not for him to send them to the pit. Remember, they said, why have you come to torment us before our time? So demons had revelation and understanding, and they had recollection of this pit. Lucifer understood what this pit is. And again, according to what John is writing here, he had an understanding and knowledge of what this pit was that he's talking about. Now, I want to give you these scriptures. I did put the, I did uh, put these up here. I want to put these up here again, the book of Jude and verse six, Jude one, six and second Peter two, four, both Jude and Peter talk about again, these angels that did not keep their proper domain. These are the angels that revolted against God. They sided with Satan. The Bible says in Genesis chapter six, that they came down, they had relations with women and they bore in the earth giants in those days are Nephilim. They were demigods. They were half angelic beings and they were half human. And thus they were the giants that God mentions in the book of Genesis, the books of first and second Enoch talk about this, but nevertheless, let me go But the book of Jude 1, 6 and second Peter 2, 4. It's on your screen. We'll start with Jude 1, 6 and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode. That would be heaven. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Why are they reserved? Because again, they will be released during the great tribulation. Now, 2 Peter 2, 4. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, where is hell? It's in the heart of the earth. Jesus said, he spoke in a parable and he said it's three days or actually it wasn't even a parable. It was a, he uses it in an illustration. He said, as the son of man, or as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale or in the heart of the earth, so will Jesus, so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Again, I will say to you that Jonah actually died and he went to the gates of hell. I don't have time to develop all that. You can find that in Jonah chapter three. He didn't just go into the belly of a well. He actually died. He was there at the very bars and gates of hell. He was in the underworld. He was under the earth. He describes that. The writer describes this in Jonah chapter three. And the son of man went, the Bible says that before he went up, he went down before he ascended. He descended into the lower parts of the earth. This is hell. This is Hades. And he set captivity. Or he, set, he, he released the captives out of uh, this compartment called Abraham's bosom. And he released them. Now, 2 Peter 2, 4 says, God did not spare the angels who sinned. But again, he cast them down to hell. That's Old Testament and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Now, again, I want to reiterate this. These angels are still present tense as, as you're watching this and as you're listening to this today. They are present tense still in this place of confinement. They're still in chains. They're still in darkness. And they're still in this place. When will they be released? When we get to what John saw in this portion of the great tribulation, they will be released in that day. Now, I want to go back. Watch this. And he, the angel that's mentioned, the star here, opens the bottomless pit. Smoke comes out of this pit. Watch this. Like the smoke of a, a smoke of a great furnace. Where are you at? I'm in Revelation 9, verse 2. 
So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. And then, watch this, out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth. Now, here's the question. Are these locusts as in insects? Well, we could be quick to say yes, but we got to read on here. Watch this. Um, and to them who the locusts was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. So how do scorpions have power? They have the capability to obtain venom in their sting, which paralyzes their victim by putting toxins in their bloodstream. And John understood this because scorpions were on the earth in John's day in 95 AD. Thus, he was giving you a depiction of these locusts that he saw way out in the future and said they're likened unto scorpions with stingers on their tail that are able to debilitate their victims through a sting, a toxin that will get into their bloodstream. Now, we got to read on. Watch this. They were commanded... So who commands these scorpions? It appears that this angel is giving them commands not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree. Now, this is where it gets real bizarre. I'm just going to be honest with you, because if these are real locusts, they actually do the opposite. They don't affect men. They don't harm humanity. They don't harm people. They don't sting you. They don't bite you. Instead, they directly attack the grass, the earth, the green thing, and the tree. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? That's, this is what swarms of locusts do. This is the danger of locusts. When they swarm in, they attack and destroy agriculture and farming. Why? Because they're, attract, they're attacking the wheat. They're attacking the tree. They're attacking the harvest. They're attacking the green thing. But it's interesting that this angel, whoever this angel is, commands them to not touch the grass of the earth or any green thing this could be foliage this could be shrubs it could be trees it could be grass it could be bushes or any tree but only those men who do not have the seal of god on their foreheads so the only ones who are going to be stung or attacked or targeted by these locusts coming up out of this pit will be those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. I don't listen. I'm not going to get into the seal of God on the forehead thing because it could take an hour to get into that. So trust me, we could maybe say that for another time, but I will tell you this. That I can listen. Let me make this real simple. God marks those who are His, and He makes a distinction between those who serve Him, those who don't, between the righteous, those who not. And I can go all the way back to the book of uh, the book of Exodus, and I can show you where even in the land of Egypt, God was marking those who were with Him, those who were not with Him, those who had a covenant with Him, those who did not have a covenant with Him. He made a distinction between the righteous and the unrighteous. There was darkness in the land of Egypt, but there was light and Goshen. The cow and cattle were dropping dead in Egypt, but they were not in Goshen. They, the, the, come on. There was a plague hitting. There was locusts hitting. There was lice hitting. There was frogs coming. There was all these things happening, but God made a distinction and separated the righteous from the unrighteous. I can take you to Malachi chapter three, and I can show you where God speaks of a book of remembrance written in heaven, where God knows those who are is his and the bible says that he will spare them in that day as 
one who spares his precious jewels and treasures so that you may know that God surely makes a distinction between those who serve him and those who don't. And we see this common thread all through 66 books of the of the old and new covenants old testament new testament and we get into revelation 9 and it's no different god is going to allow these whoever these men are that are sealed on their foreheads by the seal of god they will not be touched by these scorpions scorpion like locusts that have stings in their tails that have been commanded by an angel to harm men. Now watch this. And verse five, they were not given authority to kill them. So they will attack men, but not kill them, but they will only torment them for five months. Very interesting. Very interesting. Listen to this. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. So here again, John is referencing an, uh, an insect in his day. He's referencing uh, something in his day that he could use as uh, an analogy. And he says it's like a scorpion that has a sting that when it strikes, it won't kill a man, but it will leave him in a state of paralysis. It's like a toxin running through his veins, and it will put him in this state for five months. And in fact, the Bible says that whatever this judgment is that will come upon man through the through these locusts, it'll be so bad that men will seek death and they won't find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. I don't know about you, but that is terrifying to think that you could be stung by something, whatever this thing is, uh, and it could leave you in so much pain and so much torment that you're pleading with God to die, but you will not die. And this will go on, not for, not for a few days, but months, five months. And then John begins to give a description of these locusts in more detail. Here we go. Ready? Verse 7, Revelation 9, 7. The shape of the locusts. Now, remember, I want to I uh, emphasize something to you again that are lot, which watching and listening. John is using vocabulary that is available to him in 95 A.D., to describe something that he has seen thousands of years later in the future. Keep that in the back of your mind when we get into this. Revelation 9, 7. The shape of the locust was likened unto horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold. Now, I'm going to do something here. I should have did this a while ago. I'm going to pull up a screen here so you can get a visual for you guys that are watching this. Let me read this again. We're going to put this up on the screen for you guys on Rumble, you guys on YouTube, you guys on Facebook. Here's your screen. Because in my opinion, there's only three possible scenarios. The third one's not up here, and I'll tell you what it is in here of what these locusts could be. Now, I'm going to put this up here. Let me read this again. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. What? Now, now it's getting really bizarre. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like the lion's they, they were like the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots. Again, that's the only reference that John's got in 95 AD. He said, it's, it sounds to me like chariots with many horses running into battle. Verse 10, they had tails like scorpions. This is the third time that John has emphasized this. 
and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. Now we've also we've also ref, we've also emphasized here that the men who will be stung will be those who were not sealed with the mark or name of God on their forehead. And they had it. Now here's where it gets into. Okay, let me before we get to eleven. Let's stop right here. Look at your screen. Everybody, look at me. Everybody, listen to me. What did John see? Did John see literal insects that humanity has never discovered in the history of the earth? Now, before you laugh at me, I'm gonna let me let me let me say this: there is places in the earth where there were scientists and those who specialize in this have discovered species of different animals, insects, fish, and so on that we have never discovered. This happens all the time. They discover a new type of bird. They discover new types of fish. They discover new types of lizards or insects or reptiles. Why? Because there's places in the earth that no human footprint has ever reached. Guys, there's, there's places in the ocean that we have never reached the depths of, and thus there is animals in the ocean that we have never discovered. So again, let me ask you, could this be some type of insect that God has preserved from being discovered that will only be released just like these angels that are bound in this abusos or this pit that will only be released in the tribulation. So could it be possible that these are insects? They look like a locust because even John said three times, locust, locust, locust. So if they looked that much like a locust, he wouldn't have kept describing them as locusts. He said they look like locusts, but it's really odd because they have faces like a man, and but they have a stinger on them like a scorpion that has some kind of a toxin in them that will, uh, that will harm men for five months and torment them. But it's interesting because they are led by and they are commanded by this angel that will lead them. Or, all right, that's, that's hypothesis number one. Number two is, are they demonic spirits? After all, angels cannot be seen with the physical eye. Let me say that again. There is, gosh, Lord, help me with this Holy Spirit. We live in a world that is limited in the dimensions that we see. We operate out of five senses, what we see, what we smell, what we touch, what we feel, what we hear. But we know that if God was to remove the veil off of our eyes, there is a spirit world beyond the natural world. Let me say that again. There's a natural world. There's a spiritual world. There is, in fact, you and I are actually caught in the middle of a heavenly battle that's been going on from the beginning of time, from the forces of God and the forces of Satan. There is angels of God and there is angels of Satan that has power over these. These angels and demons, in fact, Ephesians 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. These are unseen forces that we wrestle against. They live for eternity. So again, spirits that were all the way back 
that we read about in the Old Testament, those spirits have not died. They're still here today. They're still on the earth today, and they will be here until the end of the end. So could it be that John is seen in the spirit realm and he's saying these are actually demons that he's seeing. There's some type of demonic spirits. After all, it is an angel that is commanding them, which cannot be seen in the natural eye. Does that make sense, guys? All right. Or the last hypothesis, number three. Did John the Revelator see, and you'll see this on your screen right here if you're still watching, did he see all the way thousands of years something in the sky, something coming up out of this pit that we know in present tense as these military helicopters? And let me explain this. Watch this. Let's, and I'm not saying, listen, guys, I'm not sold on any of this. I'm not saying that it, it's absolutely dogmatically, it is, by, you know, I'm not saying that it is absolutely insects. I'm not saying it's absolutely demons. And I'm not saying it's absolutely in helicopter, but I will say this, just out of an interesting note, I want to say this. John described, again, when we remember that he's using 95 AD terminology and references to describe something thousands of years, watch this. He said, the shape of the locusts were like horses prepared for battle on their heads, crowns of something like goat. Their faces was like the faces of men. Now, look, if you look at that helicopter that you're seeing on your screen, that is the cockpit of this helicopter where a man would be sitting. And if you were looking into that, you would see a man's face. OK, and then he said they had hair like a woman's hair. Well, if the propeller is spinning, it's like hair being spun. Their teeth were like the teeth of a lion. Have you ever seen, and, and I could show you other helicopters where they actually have the front of these helicopters that with, when they're armed to the, ar, no pun intended, but they're armed to the teeth. It looks like teeth on the front of these helicopters. And then he said the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. Guys, that absolutely describes, it could describe a helicopter. If you've ever heard a helicopter flying over your head or taking off or landing, again, it absolutely sounds like that. But here's the puzzling part. They had tails like scorpions and some type of toxin in the tails. Now, could this be the tail of the helicopter that is releasing some type of biochemical agent some new you know it, we know it's not nuclear because it doesn't kill men but it only torments them for five months but another puzzling piece to this puzzle that i can't get over and it's an elephant in the room that i can't look over is this angel is commanding these whatever these things are let's just say right now since we're on this if it is helicopters he says do not harm the trees the grass or any green thing, but only certain men who are not marked with the seal of God. So again, this is very perplexing and it's very puzzling. And I believe that nobody can be absolutely dogmatic, although you'll see them in the comments, I'm sure on YouTube and on Facebook and on Rumble, you'll get people, it's absolutely this, because you know, opinions, well, you know, opinions are like something that everybody's got, everybody's got one. And again, I am not being dogmatic. I'm just telling you, it has to be one of these three things. Has to be. Nothing else makes sense. Uh, even, I want to say, I'm going to pull this off here so you can look and see me here, guys. When I was doing research on this, and we're going to get to verse 11, but let me read this. J.N. Darby, who is the founder of dispensationalism, said, quote, it would be violence to the text to literally interpret an obviously figurative passage 
This is what he said, not me, but he said, there is no creature in nature that one can identify as literally describing what is being identified by John the Revelator. Therefore, we must determine what is being figuratively described. It features, its features tells us what it is and what it does. The creature being described is not a locust. That, now, that's what he said. And the traditional meaning of the word, that's why I said if it is an insect, it has to be an insect that has never been discovered in our lifetime. Okay, now it gets deeper. Ready? Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. And they, here it is, the locust, they had a king over them. Now, who is this king? Ready? This king is the star or the angel that we were just talking about. It's going to give you more detail about who this angel, this star, or this commander over these locusts are. Ready? The Bible, John says that this angel, he calls him a king over them. And he says, it is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon or in Greek is Apollyon or destroyer. Now, this is not Satan. This is not Lucifer. This is a chief prince spirit or a what John said, a king, he describes, but he calls it Abaddon, Abaddon, or Apollyon. Again, in Greek, destroyer. Now, did you know, here's what's interesting. In, up in the area of Saudi Arabia, in the Mideast, there's actually a place there called Abaddon. And, in, and consequently enough, it's right there by the Euphrates River, where John said these four angels will be released out of in the great tribulation where out of the euphrates river because the euphrates will dry up during a drought or a famine and it, these angels will be released out of this so again this is extremely interesting and by the way the word abaddon and the understanding of demonology was identified as the chief of the demons of the seventh hierarchy. Now you say, well, what is all that? Again, go and read. I encourage you to read. I don't see any danger or anything wrong with reading the books of first and second Enoch. Enoch, and by the way, that book, I believe, is referenced in the book of Jude because Jude talks about the prophecy of Enoch. But if you, you can go through all the Bible you want, and you can go to the book of Genesis, and you will not find any prophecy of Enoch, but you will find the prophecy of Enoch in his own writings in the book of First and Second Enoch. But anyway, in his writings of the book of First and Second Enoch, he describes these, uh, these ranks of, of angels. He talks about these demons. He talks about these angels that were cast into hell. Everything that the New Testament apostles write about in their writings and they describe. So what I'm trying to say to you today, guys, is we have just spent the last, what, 30 minutes or so or longer just uh, breaking down in detail Revelation chapter 9. And it is one of these intriguing passages of scripture where John the Revelator talks about this event that has not happened that is not happening, but will happen in the future, where it appears that God is going to allow these angels that have been confined until the time of the end during the Great Tribulation to be released. And one of these is a chief king spirit angel over that has authority to release these angels Ain't to release these, I'm sorry, these locusts, whatever they are, out of the earth, and they will attack men who are not marked with the seal of God. So obviously, God has a supernatural 
covering over them to shield them and protect them from the harm of these locusts, whatever they are. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this segment today. Again, please don't forget to share this on Rumble and YouTube, on Facebook, on the podcast, whatever. If you know people that enjoy Bible prophecy, they enjoy these topics of discussion. I believe this is one that you can bring up in a Bible study or a topic of discussion, and you can expound on it even more and greater. So I hope this has been a blessing to you today. Again, don't forget to subscribe to us. Don't forget to download our free app. It's available on Apple. It's available on Android. Uh, If you guys are watching by Facebook Live under the description or watching by Rumble under the description or YouTube on any of these platforms right there in the description under uh, this message, there's going to be a place right there where it says free app and there's a link. Click on the link and it's going to take you to either download the app on Apple or on Android. If you're listening by podcast today, if you go to your Apple store, Android store, type in end time headlines, download our free app and push yes to push notifications so that you can be notified of all of our news and headlines from a prophetic perspective, as well as get our to be able to watch and listen to all of our podcasts as we present them. Guys, I want to give you a quick update. This is something we're incorporating into this. As I've told you before, there will be times when there will be messages that we will not broadcast on YouTube. We, will, we won't upload them on YouTube. In fact, la, uh, if you've not seen yesterday's update, it was not put on YouTube. It was put on a Rumble channel. If you've not subscribed to us on Rumble, go and subscribe to us on Rumble. Please do that. But if you're if you have the app in your hand, you'll be able to see it when you go to it right at the very top. It's going to say latest podcast. It's going to be right there so you can watch it. You'll if there's going to be a link, you click on it. It's going to take you there, but subscribe to that. So you won't miss these if you get the app. That's why I tell you, get the app. If you don't get the app and you just watch us on YouTube or Facebook, you're not going to see some of these if we don't put, some, put them on Facebook or we don't put them on YouTube or whatever. So again, we, that's why we want to emphasize that. And again, as always, guys, we want to give you an opportunity. If you've not yet prayed about becoming a monthly partner uh, to our ministry and helping us and support us on a week or a monthly basis, you can do that. You can become a monthly partner. You can give electronically or you can give by check or money order, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Again, all of our messages are free. Our app is free. Our subscription newsletter is free. Everything is free for you guys. All we ask is that you pray about. And again, if you've been blessed, your family's been blessed by our encouraging messages, our equipping messages, our informing messages, our prophetic updates, all of the above. If this ministry feeds you, it equips you and does all that. All we ask is that you be a blessing back to us. Why? Because it helps us to remain strong and active year after year after year that we can continue to do. Because guys, it's not free to create our app alone. Listen, just, just FYI, the app that you guys enjoy, it was far from being free. In fact, it cost over $7,000 just to create that app. You guys who are developers, you understand this, how much manpower and how much hour it takes to code this stuff and break this stuff down. But but listen, by your generous support, we were able to pay for the app, develop the app, create the app and continue to update the app. And it's free. We don't have to charge anybody for the app. So we just want you to know when you support this ministry, you are helping us to remain strong. Also, a tenth of all of the increase that comes into our ministry, we tie that out. So we bless orphans, widows, the poor, the needy, disaster relief, other churches that are doing missionary work. We we are uh, we support that as well. So that's what your seed is going into. So again, you can give electronically by going to the app. You can go to the main website, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com, or you can give what I call old school. You can give by check or money order, and you can make that out to Intime Headlines P.O. Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 30655. So as always, guys, we appreciate you taking on taking the time out today to come on to the broadcast. Listen, tomorrow's Wednesday. We're going to go ahead and take a day off tomorrow so that um, I can go ahead and pray about what we're going to talk about 
on Thursday and Friday, and we can get those uh, those segments developed for our podcast for the end of this podcast week. So we'll be off tomorrow um, to rest and to prepare, and we'll be back on here on Thursday. So until then, guys, may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, and may his countenance shine upon you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said amen and amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you on Thursday. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.